Alrighty, yo. I'm just, yeah, I was wondering about that. Okay, so it's late. 12.30 p.m. Same day, though. J June 17th of 2023. I am going to attempt to finish this. I will not be able to convert this over tonight because I'm tired. But at least this part will be done, and then I'll attempt to uh, convert this over tomorrow. Now, I was using these earlier, but the light spectrum has changed because now we're into the evening. So maybe a different pair of glasses might work. Right? So we'll just try that. And I'm going to read, and hopefully we'll get to the end. And if not, then I'll attempt to convert tomorrow and finish off whatever needs to be read. First, we will pick up where we left off. Okay, we'll just jump right into it. Again, come a little closer. Let's see. We have to give my eyes time to adjust. Focus. All right. Here we go. Can't tell me this is good for my eyes, because we know it's not. But we'll see what happens after the surgery. Because, okay. So we're on page 18, April 13th. I remember it because I just watched the video that I just put up. Okay. 2018, Fraser Health Authority staff argue to allow Julian into Shimei's room. And in my last video, you know, the question was, why was Fraser Health Authority staff arguing consistently, almost from day one, well, not almost, but yeah, basically from day one, for three days in a row, to allow Julian into Shimei's room and even said that they weren't going to do it, but did it anyway. They just didn't expect to get caught at it. And then when they got caught at it, they still fought because Jordy himself was saying, right, well, I'm going to talk to your mom mm -hmm. and I'm going to try and convince her to book a time in where she, we know she's coming exactly at this time so that we can get uh, Julian to come in at this time. So there's no surprises, Miss Chorney, if you just happen to stumble in because you agreed to it. So they were, try they were trying to force me to agree to something that I didn't want from the get-go. And considering the politics around situations like this and who they had to represent them in, in a social worker aspect in terms of a gay person, it kind of makes you wonder what they were trying to accomplish on a, I don't want to say subliminal level, but like, you know how gay couples are together, right? Or lesbians are together for years and years and years and years and years and years. And then their loved one ends up in the hospital and then that gay person or lesbian get closed out, right? Because the family now, and Eleanor Gilding, just shows up out of the woodwork looking for the money. Right? Oh, well, you're comma law, but you aren't married, so get the fuck out of here. Who cares if you were comma law for 35 years? It doesn't matter. Get out of here. You weren't married. I'm the brother. I'm the sister. I'm the long-lost long uncle. Oh, no. Tom, he'll, he'll, he'll do what he wants to do. Don't worry. Well, we won't influence him to give us all his money. He's just half dead on the hospital bed. Don't worry. But even if you got to worry, it doesn't matter because you don't count. So were they doing their little test run on my family to make sure that they had that foot in the door? So if and when it happened to them, they've already established that, um, I don't want to say legislation because clearly they weren't following the legislation, right? There's, I bet you I can go into, I got the legislation here. And if I started to read it, knowing what I know, trust me, I don't think it would take me very freaking long. Okay? Okay? Because that dude was running around making all those decisions for himself. Right? 
I mean, obviously, largely, there was a bigger plan in there to piss off the family day after day after day, to keep the family arguing, to keep the family arguing, right? Doesn't matter if you're arguing with your landlord. Doesn't matter if you're arguing with your fucking neighbor. Doesn't matter if you're arguing with the freaking hospital staff. As long as you're arguing and you got that cortisol going on in your brain. Right? But no, why? What? Just because Julian said he was common law? Like, come on. No. You, you obviously had an interior motive in there. And listen, if you're 35 years into a relationship, 10 years into a relationship, five years into the relationship, and it is documented that you guys have been a loving, married, common law couple, then yeah, by all means, those people have a right to be there with their loved one. But this wasn't the case, okay? But they tried to play into that, I don't want to say lip service, but down that, you know, political realm just like they're now trying to teach kids at a very early age as toddlers and little five-year-olds and six-year-olds that it there is no such thing as a boy or a girl in terms of that's a boy and that's a girl there are two sexes and every now and then God makes a mistake and blends one together, like the two of them together, where you might get, they're known as morphodites, right? Which is a, a genetic. And then from that, anything else that develops in the brain is associated with environment. Probably the chromosomes in terms of the numbers, just because you maybe have a, you know, if you have a, you know, a male organ, but female breasts, we don't know how many X's in there and how many Y's are in there that would be biological, that would influence the hormonal changes in the brain for that individual to grow, learn what happened to them, just like Amari. You know, if Amari had not been so severely injured in his brain, so much for reading, right? Right? And had a better understanding of what happened to him he can't change what happened to him, but if his mind was not so dis damaged, he at least could learn about it, learn to understand it, and then learn just to have a better grasp of, of accepting himself. But Amari is so oblivious to even getting to that point because he's incapable of of receiving that kind of information because he can't even defend himself, people. That he understands. He understands that when a group of people start swarming him on a fucking table, he's going to get hurt. He's going to get frightened. <clears throat> but he can't get up and run away. And there's no one there to protect him. <clears throat> It's different with the morphodite. They grow up, they have their conversations with their parents, they have their conversations with their siblings and their friends as they age with doctors and they have time to internalize, think with critical thinking skills, go through life experiences to determine whether they're a boy or a girl or both or whatever or whatever. As for gay people, completely switching their uh, sexual preference over to somebody else that's not that that's the same as them versus the opposite sex well that that's you know like the, the, that's a long rabbit hole to go down and and but at the end of the day like you know like what was his what was his agenda to have a so-called common law person that couldn't prove it clearly was being accused of something heinous right and it's not like I just said well, he did it no I every time I want the doctor to call an investigation you know, right I want an invest I want a criminal investigation not a f I wanted an investigation and I wanted the, the, the hospital to call that investigation right so that it, it was more meaningful right because you know I right 
I'm being told I have to. So I'm calling, and they don't want to. They're not answering. They're not calling me back. So I go back to the hospital, and no, 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 it's not you call. Where's the doctor? The doctor needs to call, right? The doctor needs to put the call in. Keep that guy out. Here's why. Da, 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 da. No, he's not common law. He doesn't belong anywhere near my daughter. For all I know, he could have shot her up there on that bed. While holding her hand without those quote-unquote nurses noticing it. And that's assuming that she was even alive. But she wasn't. Because he already done it. Where was the great need to protect Julian's right as a common law partner outside of maybe a gay agenda? How about that, in a nutshell? Versus respecting the family's wishes and encouraging a criminal investigation. A legitimate criminal investigation yeah anytime they send in a gay person you have to ask ask yourself why especially in this day and age If I was dealing with a dyke, I suppose I'd probably feel the same way. Why are you pushing for a common law husband? Wouldn't matter. It's the fact that they're quote unquote common law. Julian wasn't common law though, but they treated him like he was. And not only did they treat him like he was, they, they protected him like he was without confirming that he was. So it's a two-prong agenda. They wanted to keep the family fighting, keep that cortisol going to keep us derailed, right? As well as they were pushing their, their, their political agenda, their LGBT in terms of the whole um, subculture of humans that like to participate in that type of sexual activity for whatever reason. I do believe that. And, to make matters worse, when I met the guy, and I'm going to start reading after this, okay, Jordy, when I met him, he walking through the halls, come on, with a, a, a jail um, shirt on, you know, with the black and white stripes, as if he was in jail. I just rolled my eyes. I'm like, okay, here we go. And yeah, he played us. I don't know what kind of social worker does that. Other than maybe what they did to Sierra. I don't quite understand it. Okay, let's stay focused. All right, 143, not reading very good here. 140, maybe if I go this way, get some different lighting going on. Mm. Amari has to poo. He's been pooing, but he's got a little nubby in there stuck. <sighs> 143. Oh my lord. I'm going to have to go back with these ones. These ones worked earlier. Hopefully they'll work again. When Tisha... Is that rain? That's good. Put out those fires. We had smoke yesterday in the atmosphere. 
So this is good. There's smoke. There's there's fires in the mountains. One forty-three. When Tisha was waiting for the social worker to come to the room, she phoned her mother to inform her that hospital staff were. Oh my lord! I got. I found some other ones over here. Maybe these ones might work. This is not. This is not funny, people. Like you, you do this fifty times a day. Mm-hmm. Yep. Ooh, something wrong with these things. Okay, let's see. Can you sit him up a little bit? He is sitting up. Is he under a toy? No. Nope. Over a toy? No. Poot out, Amari. Come on. Line to talk. Okay. Fuck, man. When Tisha. Oh, that's worse. Holy lordy, lordy, lordy. Okay, just suck it up, Buttercup. When Tisha was waiting for the social worker to come to the room, she phoned her mother to inform that hospital staff were allowing Julian and other people into Shimei's room without the family's permission. 144. Judy called the hospital social workers line and the ICU direct line to talk to Jordy, the second acting social worker for the day who she had not met yet to ask why he was going against the family's request to not allow Julian or other random people into Shimei's room. 145. Jordy defended his position against Judy to allow Julian and other individuals into Shimei's room by saying he didn't know that there was a restriction and that it was hospital policy to allow anyone who wanted to go into her room at any time of the day except for when nurses were changing shifts. He forgot to mention except for when nurses are touching up dead bodies with embalming makeup and if need be to add an extra suture being that the face was falling off the skull. One forty six. Jordy also mentioned that Julian was being monitored by staff and that nothing more bad could happen to Shimei under their watch if Judy was concerned about that. So he acknowledged there is the possibility, but the guard dogs were on duty. So it was impossible for anything bad to happen to Shimei. 147. Jordy did not want to acknowledge that Judy was trying to tell him regarding that Shimei, Shimei's demise was extremely suspicious in nature and therefore Judy's request did not deserve confirmation by Jordy. So here I am. I want an investigation. 
something suspicious ha suspicious happens to my daughter, you know, blah 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 blah, and he just ignored it. One forty-eight. Judy was provoked by Jordy to get angry on the phone. So now he's successful at getting me angry on the phone. Keep that cortisol going, right? To which she simply hung up on Jordy saying that she needed to consider another lawsuit against Fraser Health Authority. I had to take it there. This is why you write it down. Why should I, under those circumstances, have to be thinking about filing a fucking lawsuit? Oh, I know. Do a Sonya, too. We're going to kick you out in 2003 in the middle of the winter with five dependent kids and a blind man. And get the hell out. We're cutting you off welfare because we're bringing in legislation in nine months from now that we haven't even fucking implemented yet. And if you don't want to go to work in the, to in, in the tomato house, you know, a hot house, well, yeah, we're going to show you who's boss here. And they did. They cut me off of welfare. And I told you already in, in, in a previous video, I didn't, I didn't, you know, I, I, I went into panic mode, <laughs> right? I did what I had to do. I moved in from a fucking five-bedroom better house than this house with a good landlord, okay? A landlord that actually fucking fixed things properly and in a timely fucking manner and wanted me to stay there and loved us, okay? And as a family, right? And 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 I had to leave, and I put my family in a two-bedroom fucking leaky fucking apartment with some concentration camp guy running around acting like it was, I don't know what it was, and it was just awful. And then, okay, I forgave the government. I moved on. I was off of welfare for six fucking years. I secured the foundation. I secured the federal trademarks in two countries. I did what I was supposed to do, right? And, all, and then I end up in this stupid house, and next thing you know, right, Andre's gone, this, that, Sierra turned into a junkie, and then J John goes, right? And then John gets medically kidnapped. I don't even know where I was going with that. And yeah, I had to file a lawsuit to try and get him back to get my to get the attention of my government to inform them of what their employees were doing. Uh-huh. Trusting my government. Yeah, and that didn't work, right? They blew that out the door, right, with their Andrew the Dragon, even though they held even though they held in their hand that judge literally held the enduring power of attorney that that one good bank manager gave to me a year after the fact because he knew that what was going on was a fucking crime huh and i passed that over to the to that judge through their little whatever those court things are that do that typing and he looked at it and he passed it back and he said oh well yeah maybe dismissed dismissed and then I came back, and but as I was doing Uncle John's paperwork, going through legislation after legislation after legislation after mandate after rules and regulations and acts and the Criminal Code of Canada, what did I come across? I came across what the government did to me in 2003 through the uh, their social service department. So I included that in there, in Uncle John's lawsuit. I think I made note of it. Yeah. And they, yeah, of course, they threw everything out. And then when they did John, I'm um, Shimei, I filed the, the other one. And that Sonia too, that Sonia too, with their kangaroo court on fucking MS teams, right? Said it was past statute of limitation past statute of limitation. How the hell are you supposed to take the government to court, right, as a single mother with five dependent children and a blind man as you're being thrown out into the middle, into the, into the fucking streets in the middle of winter through legislation that wasn't even in effect yet? How, how, how was I supposed to know that, that that legislation was, how was I, 
how was I supposed to know that that legislation even existed? All I know is there was no deposit into my account. They literally cut me off. Just blink, it was gone. Kind of like the shit that's going to start happening to people more and more and more now with these uh, uh, credit scores coming in, with these CB, you know, digital currencies. That's what's going to happen. You're going to wake up one day and you're going to go into your account and there's going to be nothing there. And you're going to be thrown out under the streets and it's going to take you years later to find the legislation that gave them the right to do that. And if you ever want to go back and fight it, it will be too late because they'll say you missed the time of, of the statute of limitation. Well, this is the same kind of shit. Judy was provoked by Jordy to get angry on the phone to which she simply hung up on Jordy saying that she needed to consider another lawsuit against Fraser Health Authority. Don't leave it for five fucking years. Do it within the first month or two if you know that they screwed you around. I'm serious. Go look for the legislation. It's not that hard to find. And it's really not that hard to, because it will come to you. You'll be reading and reading and saying, oh, this is boring. I don't understand what, you know, they're talking with weird twisted words and, you know, and I might have to use a dictionary to understand that word. But at the end of the day, when it reflects to you, you'll find it. You will find it where they did you wrong. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. They like to use their legislation only when it's an advantage to them. But when you come back and you throw it at them, oh, that's when they ignore it, people. Mm-hmm. And don't leave it for too long because they can hide behind their statue of limitation. Yeah. And I would have done it. Hell, I was forced to do it. But if you notice, when I went with Chimay and her lawsuit, I said, fuck Fraser Health Authority. Uh-uh. Go, go straight to the, to the source. It is the government that pays these people their wages. Not Fraser Health Authority. Not Island Health Authority. Not Coastal Health Authority. Not any health authority. It is the government, the parliament buildings that cut the fucking check. And it's their responsibility to monitor their employees. But I wasn't thinking like that back in those days. But I do now. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's what this shit taught me. Don't waste your time. And when you go and don't be afraid to start taking these guys one by one to court as a minister, as this, as that, or whatever. Yeah, start bringing them in one by one as you call in the whole fucking government in terms of the lawsuit is against the, 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 the attorney general and the attorney public safety solicitor general because they're the ones that are supposed to protect you from criminal activity within the community in general. Not set you up for it. And then make sure that it continues to happen. Because they don't want to do their jobs. And all they have to do is send in a Sonya to, to squash it. Yeah. It makes me mad. You don't even know. 149. Jordy called back within 15 minutes or so and proceeded to try to convince Judy. So he's still not giving up, okay, to allow Julian and other random people into Shimei's room. Judy reminded Jordy that she and her family were being provoked by hospital staff so that FHA, Fraser Health Authority, agents could write into their files that Shimei's family was being hostile. Because you know they're going to switch it up on you and criminalize you for reacting for their bad behavior. They're synthetic. Some of these individuals that you're coming into contact in these kind of places, I swear, are synthetic. They are the skinwalkers that like to steal other people's body parts so that they can go off and do something heinous. Otherwise, a normal human being wouldn't be this way.
This is some morbid shit. But when you're going through it, you don't got time to reflect on it. You are, are, are being provoked. You are reacting to the pro, 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 pro... Oh, I know how to pronounce it, but I can't say it right now. The provocation, you know, I'm not pronouncing it correctly. You're being provoked. Because this is being done with intent. Intent. They did this on purpose. Judy, okay, so FHA agents could write into their files that Shimei's family was being hostile. 150. Judy reminded Jordy that Shimei was not an addict and that she didn't injure herself and that Julian had motive and opportunity to hurt her and that Julian was not Shimei's partner, common law, or otherwise in any aspect of the word. Okay? That's what I'm saying. You've got some sort of underlining political agenda going on in here. Okay? They didn't even verify in any kind of capacity that Julian was a common law, quote-unquote, husband. They took it for face value. <clears throat> in terms of what he told them. And he and they ignored everything that we said. 151. No final agreement between Jordy and Judy was made to allow Julian free access to see Shimei under any circumstances. So he could have creeped his ass back in at 3 o'clock in the morning and they would have been more than happy to give him a fucking tea party with Shimei. Okay? And then not say a word to it about it to us. Yep. Yep. He left it open. Who was he to make that decision? Some social worker? Who, same thing with uh, Cheryl Newell. Newell? Yeah, something like that. With John. John? John's not going home. Mm -mm. By any means necessary. He's going to a long, sorry, he's going to a, temp he's going to a rehab center for two months. And if he's not going to a rehab center for two months, he's going to his sister up in Mill Bay on the island for two months. But he's not going home by any means necessary. Doesn't matter what he says. Doesn't matter what he wants. It's what I want and what I say because I'm the fucking social worker here. Screech, 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 screech. A screechy fucking Punjabi British woman that came into fucking Canada on a stupid working visa. That's what helped to facilitate the medical kidnapping of Uncle John. No final agreement between Jordy and Judy was made to allow Julian free access to see Shimei for, uh, under any circumstances. All right, so April 13, 2018, FHA, Fraser Health Authority staff, argue now with Mark Hain, <laughs> right, allow Julian to allow Julian into Shimei's room. So they argue with us on the 11th. They argue with us on the fucking 12th. They're arguing with us all day long on the, uh, on the 13th. And they're arguing more than just with one. They're arguing with Tisha. They're arguing with Paige. Paige. You see, this is why you need to write it down. And they argued with Mark Kane, And they argued with me on the phone. That's four fucking people all day long they were arguing with for Julian. What was so special about Julian? What was their motive? <laughs> 152. After Mark Kane was informed by his mother that Julian and another random and other random people were allowed into Shimei's room, Mark Kane went to the hospital to 
reconfirm what was discussed the following day. So I told him, I told him on the 11th that when I, at that 9 o'clock, we had to wait. They went first. I told the nurses, right, blah, blah, right. I told the, the, the whoever was the social, the first social worker that we met after Julian, Tamika, and, and, and their mother left. And then I went in and said, oh, we're, what's all these poke marks? And then I had that little conversation with that fucking social worker, the first social worker, right. And, and I specifically said, no, I don't want Julian here. This is why, blah, blah, blah. I want an investigation. Get the doctor to call the investigation, blah, 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 right. And then we went back after court on, on the next day, the 12th, right? Because we went to court and everything, and we had to stop. So we stopped off at the hospital on the way back home. And then we argued with that fucking nurse and social worker because of Julian. And then on the 13th, right, they're letting him come and go and doing as he please as they're arguing with each and every family member just so that he can continue to fucking do that. Why? Why? Random people were allowed into Shimei's room. Marcane went to the hospital to reconfirm what was discussed the following day with the nurse and the social worker, Allie. So we met Allie on, on the 12th. Regarding no visitors allowed... Un unless approved by Shemay's immediate family. Andre, shut up. I want you to go to bed now. I already told you that. Page 19. Members. 153. Jordy stated he was responsible to everyone connected to Shemay's case as he defended Julian by saying Julian presented himself in a non-threatening way and that FHA staff had no reason to deny anyone access to Shemay. Okay, you know what that made me think of? There was a fella just over here. My neighbor told me about it. He had this around you know COVID and shots and all this other shit going on anyway I guess he had some kind of a heart problem or a heart attack or something ended up at the Surrey Memorial Hospital right they cut him open with his chest right for the heart to do whatever it was so bad that whatever was going on in there they didn't know what to do with him and they left him lying on this ICU bed with his chest open okay and it was like that until he basically died I mentioned it in one of my videos before. So you're telling me that as a neighbor, and I, if I would have heard about that at that time when it happened, this guy is telling me that I could just jump in my car, drive to the hospital, and go fucking look for myself? Just because he was my neighbor? And I'm anybody that has the right just to walk into somebody's ICU, ICU, ICU room, even though they might be laying there with their chest wide open because the doctors didn't know what the fuck to do with it once they opened it up and realized what they were looking at? Yeah, okay. Okay, I'd like to see that happen. Oh, excuse me, who are you? Well, if that's the case, why shouldn't I just go to the ICU now and, and just wander in and they'll be like, well, who are you here to see? Oh, well, I don't know. So-and-so in room 104. Well, how do you know? What well, does it matter? Jordy Ray's hair says I can do it. Right? I gotta go see what's going on. Okay, so I had to change them. Do a little, you know, the this stuff, right? To help them. Every now and then. It's just the way it is. And he has a bit of runs yet. He he's plugged up, but he has the runs yet. Like, whatever. <sighs> Anyway, let's just try and get this done. Page 19. What glasses am I wearing? These ones. Okay. So, 153. Jordy stated that he was responsible for everyone connected to Shimei's case as he defended Julian by saying Julian presented himself 
in a non-threatening way and that FHA staff had no reason to deny anyone access to Shmei. So, my neighbor has a heart attack. I find out that he's in the ICU, okay? I didn't know that his chest had been open and he was laying on the bed, but the point is, is he's in ICU. And being that I'm neighbors with him and I'm worried about him, I just decided to go to the hospital. And therefore, based on what Jordy has to say, I should be able just to walk in and do my looky-loos on my neighbor, simply because I can call the neighbor card. Is that, is, is, is that what's going on here? Because not only was he allowing Julian, but anybody else for that matter. Not to mention who else the Fraser Health Authority staff were allowing in and out of that room when nobody was around in terms of putting in their fucking orders. You know, I want this spleen. Well, d look, you guys can't fight over the liver now, okay? Because we can always slice it in half and sell it in two parts because it can regenerate itself. So don't worry about the liver. We got that base covered. You know? And then go on to bit shoot with Liberty Talk Canada, and she's interviewing some broad that's from the United States of America, talking about how she can hook up her clients with doctors, ASAP, to cut a fucking deal so that you can get organ transplant, providing that you can pay for it. Like, seriously. <laughs> Right? Remember that video? Shit. Read between the lines. Okay? 154. Judy also stated that Judy's position of being a temporary decision maker was only for... So, Jordy reminded me. Who's boss? He reminded me on the phone who's boss and who makes the decisions here? The real decisions, right? Jordy also stated that Judy's position of being a temporary decision maker was only for medical conditions and nothing else. I wish I had a lawyer brain, because if I had a lawyer brain, I'd pick that one apart, literally. But you have to get into legislation for that. And I'm sorry, I just don't have the stamina or the energy for it right now. Mm-hmm. You got an unconscious human being laying on a hospital bed that came in unconscious. If that's not a medical crisis, I don't know what is. with everything severely damaged in when it comes to vital organs and the brain. 155. Jordy also confirmed that no final decision was made by him or his co-workers. Screech! Screech! By any means necessary! Julian can come and visit at any time he wants, but we'll make it convenient for you so that you can book in your own appointment first so we can avo avoid having him come when you come. When you come, we'll make sure he's hiding in the fucking closet so that you don't see him and get upset. But the minute you leave, he can come in and stay with Shemay for the other 23 hours of that duration until you come back. Because we know, we know your pattern. You're only going to show up for an hour. And then you're going to leave. So what does it matter who comes and goes? Because you're not here to see it anyway. And when you do come, we'll just tell Julian to go take a fucking nap in the freaking closet. You know, where they keep their brooms and their, 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 their uh, what do you call those things? The wash buckets and their rags and their, you know, cleaning solutions. That kind of closet, right? janitor's closet. He can go take a nap in the fucking janitor's closet. And the minute I leave, they'll go in there and they'll make sure they promise, they'll promise him, the king, that they're going to wake him up so he can go back and hold Shmay's dead hand. Oh, sorry. Limp hand. See, I get cynical. 
I'm being no, I'm being very cynical with this people. Because that guy was being cynical. 156. Jordy said that he would treat Julian no different than he would Marcane, as if he was no different than Julian. And Jordy reminded Marcane of that. So this is when he was talking to Marcane. He wasn't talking to me. 157. Marcane reminded Jordy that he was Shimei's brother and that he had not threatened his sister like Julian had. 158. The attending nurse responded back with, if they, meaning staff, ever seen Julian try and burn down Judy's house, as in Julian displaying behavior, only then they, FHA, Fraser Health Authority, agents, would not allow Julian into Shimei's room. So, you're being condescending to my son. They're mocking my son. They're ridiculing my son. They're being sarcastic in a, what, nice way? 159. Fraser Health Authority staff treat their patients as if it's a meet and greet where anyone can walk in off the street just as long as they appear to be appropriate by staff despite Shimei being in a state of massive organ failure and in a state of being brain dead. So I had already determined that she was brain dead. Okay? I was there breathing in her mouth for crying out loud people. And the only inclination of her being alive at that time for any reason other than because they wanted to preserve the organs outside of depending on a perfusion machine that is. Right? It would be that they drugged her up with one of those drugs that put people in a state where it really does look like they're dead. And so much so that people have even gone out of their way to bury those kind of bodies based on that drug that they gave them that put them in a comatose state, state, state <coughs> where they had no pulse, nothing. But really, they were in such a uh, low... I don't know. And then, you know, they wake up before they, they, they cover up the fucking coffin. Or they're on a gurney. <laughs> and, you know, you've, you've heard of that. You, you've, right? There is a drug that comes from these tropical countries that can do that. <laughs> so, that would be the only hope of Shimei being alive, is that they didn't just use fentanyl, morphine, and cocaine to get what they wanted, but they threw in a little extra something just so that she didn't die, so they wouldn't have to use the perfusion machine. But I don't think so. That's... The chance of that is worse than a needle in a haystack. Right? Because they got the perfusion machines and the hammocks and the workers and the facilities and they've streamlined it because they've been doing it for so long and the public has been so accepting of it that they don't even question what's happening under their noses. That I, I highly doubt that Shimei was alive in any kind of capacity in a situation outside of <clears throat> Maybe there's an extra drug in there that they're just not telling us about. 
<clears throat> and it would only be to make her look like she was dead. <clears throat> because of the effects of that type of drug. But, no. Because don't think I haven't thought about that angle, because I have. <clears throat> 159. Fraser Health Authority staff... Oh, boy, here we go again. <clears throat> <clears throat> treat their patients... Okay, as a meet and greet, read that. All right. April 13, 2018, Tisha Texas Julian. All right. Tisha Texas Julian with at 4.26 p.m. Hey, court is 2 p.m. Tuesday. Julian, 4.26 p.m. Okay. April 14, 2018, 160. Shimei continues to deteriorate. I have... Pictures of her. No, not the 16th. Yeah. The 16th, the 19th, and the 17th. Uh-huh. My son took a little three-minute video with just less than a minute of Shemay laying, looking embalmed on their hospital bed <coughs> on the 17th. <coughs> and Tisha's brother Jerome <coughs> took pictures on the 19th as well as on the 16th mm -hmm. and you can clearly see how she deteriorated from the 16th to the 19th and on the 17th her eyes were caving in but by the 19th they had put in eye caps and I can prove that uh huh You heard what I said, right? Her eyes were caving in on the 17th, but by the 19th, they put in their eye caps. She probably didn't even have eyes. And if she did, they were fake eyeballs. And they were caving in because everything that was inside of her was turning into goo. Well, what was left... Of what was inside of her. <clears throat> 161. Ice packs were taken off April 14th, 2018. Okay, she was continuing. Oh, we're not, we're on the 14th. Sorry, not on the 16th. How did I jump ahead on that? We're on the 14th. She may continue to deteriorate. 161. Ice packs were taken off her body, but body begins to overheat thereafter. Yeah, because at some point I was informed that whoever was in the room at that time, you know, because there was people in there that were allowed to be there for however long they wanted to be there. It didn't matter. And once they got permission to be there, they could come and go and do as they pleased. I didn't need to be there, and we didn't need to be there, but they had the right to be there because we said they had the right to be there. So anyway, there was a group of people. I don't know who exactly was there at that time because I wasn't there. And I guess they, they took off the ice packs and whatever, and they were watching the, the, the monitors of whatever, and apparently, apparently her body started to heat up real fast. Well, yeah, because she was dead. It was decomposing. That's why. And then they all started freaking out. Or was that at a different time? Okay, maybe that was soon after, maybe the next day. Who knows? Let's just keep on reading. Either or, as soon as they took off the ice packs, her body started to heat up. And they took them off on the 14th, so they had them on for two fucking days. They kept her body temperature, what, at 33, at 33 degrees Celsius for two days? versus 37 because they can't go any lower than 33 degrees because if they go any lower than 33 deg degrees Celsius in terms of a body temperature they can actually kill the person but because they brought her body temperature down to 33 degrees somewhere in her medical files it states that she was shivering she was shivering she was a cold so somehow that made her alive no 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 dead bodies can shiver too they shudder and shiver. It spooks. It spooks. Um, um, 
funeral directors and those kind of people and whatnot, right? Because, you know, you're there and working and doing whatever and the body starts to move on its own. Ooh. <laughs> right? It will fart and it will burp and it can twitch, right? <laughs> As it's decomposing. Look it up if you don't believe me. It's true. <laughs> and of course, every case is an individual case, so it's not right across the board as a given well the body will do this 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 and this no it might do this it might not do that but it might do that over there where the next body might be the one that will do that but won't do that and won't do that over there but it will do something else over there either or it all relates down to decomp the decomposition process to which embalming can't stop it can slow it down just like with the eyes right the glaucoma drops could have slowed down what I've got going on right now, but I didn't have them for over two and a half years, so this is why I am the way I am. And there's reasons for that, right? Well, it's the same thing with embalming, right? If you don't have a body embalmed and it's a, and it's in a warm, ambient type of environment like this, oh yeah, it's going to decompose real fucking fast. If you put it into an ice box like they did with Sierra's body for 19 days, Holy shit, it looking good. It looking good, people. You wouldn't even know that she had been dead for 19 days. Nothing compared to, to, to Shemay's. From hot to cold, right? Like from a warm room to a cold room. Big difference in the way the body decomposes. Big difference. Which makes me even wonder, was Sierra even dead for 19 days? For all I know, they could have fucking tortured her for, for freaking 18 and killed her on the 18th day and let me see her on the 19th day. That's how good her body looked. And I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. Like, it's weird. It's weird. She hardly even had any discoloration on her body. I had to ask the funeral director, uh, whatever her name was, like, like she, she's not even discoloring, right? And she goes, oh, well, you, if you look here a little bit, you can see it now starting on the stomach area, right? And she pointed it out, so I videotaped it. And you could barely see it, though. And I said, well, why would that be? You know, because bodies start to change colors and do all these things, right? Oh, well, you know, they took out her organs and it's all sitting in a bag in her gut. That must be it. And I'm like, yeah, okay. But with Sierra, though, her, her eyes had... Because they took out her brain, right? You know, they pull back and take out the brain and put everything, right? And uh, her eyes were caved in. Just like Shemay's eyes cave, were, were caved in. But they ca they were caving in so much because there was nothing there that they ended up putting their eye caps in. And I can prove that. By the 19th, she had eye caps. Nice and round. Mm -hmm. As her body was decomposing. Okay. April <laughs> April 16th, 2018, 1.62, Judy had a telephone conversation with the attending doctor who said that the brain swelling in Shimei's head was getting worse and that all her organs were shutting down. One sixty-three. The doctor asked to make an appointment with Judy and her children to meet with the brain doctor for the following day at one p.m. It's raining heavy. Thank God. Put out some fires. That's what we need. One sixty-four. Can you hear the rain? There's a rainstorm coming through. 164. Shimei, Shimei's body was overheating and was extremely hot to the touch. This was April 15th. So on April 14th, they took off 
all their ice caps on the legs and I guess on the torso. She started to heat up right away. People noticed it, right? It was made note to me. And by the 15th, her body was still mucking around, getting hot, okay? People noticed it, right? And if you're wearing rubber gloves and you're touching the skin and you can feel that it's hot, what does that tell you? April 15, 2018, Julian, Texas, Tisha. Julian, Texas, Tisha with 10.04 a.m. Hey, Tisha, how is Shimei? Any updates? Tisha responds with 10.04 a.m. She is in the same condition. I'm speaking with the doctor today. Julian texts Tisha with 10.04 a.m. Okay, please keep me updated. Did you guys give... Did you guys give her phone to RCMP? You guys should. Where did that come from? Because he was curious to know what the fuck was going on with the phone. Because remember he came back in, snuck his ass into Shimei's room just so that he could put it back. He obviously was enjoying what was going on. He has to poo out that one little something that's stuck there. Sometimes this happens. And then when he gets it out, it's great. Let me just go check on him. That on there, I'll get to that after. Okay, okay thank you. It's nice and cool. Good so call. I'll... Yeah, that's fine. We'll work on it. I thought okay? it was a week for a sec, but I'm like, no, because I'll see drops. Okay, we'll there. work on it. Okay, next week for sure. You and I. Good night. Love you too. <sighs> What's that? Yeah, thank you for catching that bag of potatoes. Oh, here comes the thunder. I had a bag of potatoes oh, over yeah. there. They're starting to go bad. What did you see? Oh, my God. You're not supposed to be around electronics when lightning comes. Yeah. Stay away from the water pipes. Seriously. You're yeah, not supposed windows. to be around pipes. Of course, it had to be raining. Huh? So it's it's raining, but... <coughs> okay, go to bed because I want to finish this video. <coughs> okay, I'll just keep a little distance here, right? If everything goes blink, then we know. Well, the camera will keep working, but all the lights will go out. Where's the candle? Get a, get the flashlights, Andre. Just in case. Oh, my was outside. Well, get her in. She needs to be with her kittens. And find find the flashlights. I only have one. You got one? I already have one in my hand. I, have, I keep it in my bedroom just for emergencies. Where's my silver one? Go look on the counter for my silver one. I have my own. Ooh, those potatoes are no good. Yeah, they can <laughs> <light. laughs> Well, man, I can't get to everything all the time. I was looking at those things. 
Okay, let me get on with it. Life is life. I don't know where your flashlight is here. We'll look around just for a little while longer. Okay, April 15, 2018, Julian, Texas. Yeah, okay. All right. Uh, ten. Yeah, she needs to come in. 10.04 a.m. She is in the same condition I'm speaking with the doctor today. Julian, Texas, Tisha. 10.04 a.m. Okay, please keep me updated. Did you guys give her phone to RCMP? You guys should. Because he wants to know if we found it, right? Okay, April 16, 2018. Immediate family meet with brain doctor, 165. Marquane, Tisha, Judy, and Shemay's brother on her father's side by the name of John Harley and his auntie all spoke with the brain doctor at the Surrey Memorial Hospital who said Shemay's brain was dead and beginning to leak through her spinal column that connects the brain to the spine. Now, remember what I told you about ho homeostasis and, oh, I, 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 I know it starts with an H. It's not the hippocampus because the hippocampus is a little organ here. Hip. And a little, what? what? Hip? You mean? What? Hip? Something that starts with the H? What? Hip. Hip starts with the H. No, 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 no. It's in the brain. Oh. I can't. It's a different. It's, 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 it plays an important role to regulate, help regulate the hippocampus. I'm sorry. It plays an important role to help regulate homeostasis. Homeostasis is when everything is working good together in unison. But there is a part of the brain that has a particular, we'll just call it its own, it's like an own little organ within the brain that is central to sending out the hormones within the body to the different various parts of the body and organs and that type of thing to make it operate in unison with the hippocampus helping to regulate that process so anyway I'd have to I, okay it's, I, I, I'd have to reread and refresh my memory on this okay the point is if we're lit if if the doctor is saying her brain is leaking Leaking. What does that tell you? I guess it's like that fucking bag of rotten potatoes that's sitting in my kitchen sink now that was leaking all over the floor. <laughs> okay? <laughs> There's not too many potatoes in there that you're going to want to eat. That bag is going out into the compost tomorrow. I don't care how many good potatoes are in there left because you know they've been infected with something. <laughs> okay? Right? <laughs> Shit. Right? I'm not that hungry. That's okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So how alive do you honestly think she was? But they still got her displayed as she is. She still color-wise looks like as if she is. They're treating everybody in the room as if she is, like, you know, in terms of, don't, oh, yeah, you can come visit, she's still alive. Yeah, right, alive my ass. Oh my god. Things are banging around out there now. Burger Cat was uh, laying the cat box up there, but... Oh, I, feel, I don't know what to think. Like you know, I just might get that cat fixed yet. Uh, I'm fixing Little Mo, and then after Little Mo, if Wonder Cat's still hanging around, I don't know. I might just get that cat fixed, and then maybe if I get him fixed, I might be able to let him come back in, in the house or something, because I feel sorry for that cat. We'll see. The other cats don't like him, no. Oh. We, we swear he's homeless, but he sprays, and my son doesn't like him, because he's a nuisance, and I don't necessarily like him either, but he's not a bad cat.
just nobody wants him and he won't go back from wherever he came from because he just showed up here one day and didn't leave. Like little Mo. Like little Mo. Two cats in three days. Yeah, okay. What, why? Why Why did that happen? And little Mo showed up like within less than 48 hours after Mo fell off a fucking balcony 33 stories high. Why should she show up on the exact day? Anyway, let me finish my video. Shimei's brain was dead and beginning to leak through her spinal column that connects the brain to the spine. 166. The doctor said that the machines needed to be turned off ASAP because as Shimei's body deteriorated, it was going to get very difficult for the nursing staff and that was and that it was unpleasant well you can only imagine 167 but what difference does it make you're already fucking dealing with stupid ghouls right that's the shit that they like so you know you reap what you sow. <laughs> right? Okay? My God. 168. Tisha took the news very hard and wanted to allow family and friends to say their goodbye to Shimei until the 20th of April of 2018. April 17, 2018. Judy goes to provincial court to extend interim guardianship. 169. When arriving to the courthouse, Judy was approached by two MCFD Ministry of Children and Family Development Ministry of Children and Family Development social workers who have been involved with her in the past because of Andre Chorney, who is Judy, who is in Judy's care. I gotta turn off this little, this little bear. Hold on a minute. I'm sorry, Amari, but this is annoying. Hey, where are you going? No way, man. You're moving too freaking fast. Not tonight, kiddo. Stop it. Oh. oh my lord. Little Mo had kittens. These two showed up. Next thing you know, I got kittens. I want to get her fixed, but she's looking fat. And I'm like, just seen it, and I'm like, oh my god, better not be pregnant again. Stupid cats. I'm being stalked by cats. Yeah. Okay. 170. I don't know how long this is. I'd like to finish it, though. We're on page 21. <coughs> Let's try and finish the video, okay? <coughs> 170. But I have to check on Amari because he keeps flipping himself over and inching towards the edge. It was suggested by one social worker that perhaps Shimei 
was celebrating her enrollment into college, which put the onus again on Shimei taking cocaine and fentanyl on her own accord. However, both Tisha and Judy reminded the social worker that wasn't in Shimei's character to do such a thing. 171. Julian had asked the court for a trial as he stated that Judy was an un that Judy was unfit to raise both Andre and Amari. So they called MCFD on me. They killed my daughter and then they called MCFD on me. Okay? <laughs> One seventy two MCFD social workers confirmed to the judge that they were investigating any concerns from both parties. 173. It was ordered by the judge that Julian be allowed to see Amari under supervision via in an MCFD office. 174. Judy was made to sign a MCFD safety plan based on the allegations of Julian to whom who has had a long-standing vendetta against Judy's against Judy long before Amari was even born the safety plan was written to expire on May 17th of 2018 175 the order dated April 12, 2018, by Judge Dome, paragraph, paragraph 1, 2, and 3, was extended until May 1st of 2018 by Judge Ferris, as J Judy needed to do, needed to go to legal aid to make application for legal counsel. April 17, 2018. Judy requests for a police investigation. But you have to remember, from day one, from the first day, I was asking for an investigation. Criminal investigation. Get the doctor to call a criminal investigation. Get the doctor to, to call the RCMP up and get them to start investigating what happened to Shmei. There was something bad that happened to Shmei. The doctor fucking knew it, and the doctor should have went to the cops and said, look, there's something bad going on here. This is very suspicious, and they should have got the cops involved, but they didn't. So by the 17th, right, I'm having to go outside of the hospital now, it sounds like. Judy phones, yeah, the not because that's the only way you can get in, right? you got to phone the non-emergency line and book an appointment with a fucking investigator, okay? Judy, <laughs> Judy phoned the non-emergency police line late in the evening at about 11 p.m. requesting for an investigation into what happened to Shmei. She spoke to a constable, Schmidt, and gave him the police file number, blah, 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 for reference, okay? Uh, so I've got two police file numbers here. I got... There we go. I was looking for that. See? Another 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 needle in the haystack just fell from the sky because I have this bad habit of writing things down and my papers get mixed up and now I'm blind and but yeah, this should be two separate fucking numbers here. The one from the actual day itself and the file number of the actual uh other investigators that finally showed up at the house to tell me that Shmi did it to herself. So where where did I see that number? I just read it. Well, I didn't read it. Well, here we go. Oh, no. Wait a minute. Yeah, no, they put down the same number. Yeah, they put down the same number. 
I'm pretty sure there's two different numbers here. This number here is the number that of the cops that came to the house. Well, the number that's written here should be the number of the cops that came three and a half weeks later to do an investigation, quote unquote, because the beat cops didn't do it. So both numbers are the same. But it's two different in two different files, I'm sure. If I remember correctly. I don't know. I have it written down somewhere. But I get busy. So this is these cops, this this file number, they never investigated. They're the ones who phoned up Tisha the next day and said that there was nothing to investigate because she may Whatever happened to her it happened by natural causes. Remember I read that? Okay, so 177. Constable Schmidt said that premeditated injury or death, premeditated injury or death caused by fentanyl on the victim was hard to prove but that he would pass the information provided by Judy to the lead investigator who is back in the office on Thursday, April 19th of 2018. And I was being told this on April 17th. April 18th, 2018, Dr. phones Judy to request for life support to be shut off. So now they're badgering me to shut off their machine. So not even one day later, I see him on the 16th and he's phoning me, well, sorry, two days later, and he's phoning me on the 18th to say, no, you don't, you can't, right? Okay. So, all right, 178. The doctor from the Surrey Memorial Hospital phoned Judy and requested that the machines hooked up to Shimei's body be disconnected before April 20th, 2000, because I told you people, she was decomposing. She was ready to explode and have her fucking face fall off. Her face was dropping. It was agreed that the machine hooked up to Shimei's body would be disconnected no later than by 10 p.m. on April 19th, 2018. So I got muscled into it. April 19, 2018, MCFD come to Judy's house, 179, page 22. Social workers came to the house to confirm that a functioning crib was set up for Amari upstairs so that co-sleeping did not happen. <laughs> One, that's like, well, you can get your grandson back as long as you can provide him a room all for himself. Okay, Shimei, you're going to have to leave your room. I know you love this room and you're so happy to be in it, but you're going to have to go downstairs now to your sister's room. And I'm sorry, but, you know, it's we're going to rub salt into the wound and we're going to let your room sit empty for a total of 15 months as we go back and forth to court as you're being terrorized now in Sierra's old room because Sierra comes around dirtying it up with this and that and everything else under the sun thinking it's still her room and there's nowhere else for you to go because we're all waiting for the social workers to do the right fucking thing here. Okay? 15 months that room sat empty. And now I gotta show where Amari's gonna sleep. as I got people suggesting that Shimei was partying at 8 o'clock in the morning because she was going to go to fucking college in 12 days.
when she just simply didn't just do it to herself and she deserved what she got. That's bullshit. 180. An appointment was made for Julian to have a supervised visit at the MCFD office for April 25th, 2018 between the hours of 1.30 p.m. and 3.30 p.m. 181. Judy asked the social worker what legislation, what legislated acts, <laughs> why are we not surprised, right? <laughs> Where involved, were involved with Amari within the current court proceedings and she was told they were the Family Relations Act and the Child and Family Community Service Act which is the one that they operate under where the Family Relations Act was the one that uh, Julian and I were operating under. 182. Judy was informed that the judge ordered supervis supervised visits for Julian. April 19, 2018. Shemay is declared clinically dead. She died downstairs in the basement. It was already rumored that she was dead by the 15th, but they confirmed it by the 16th with their leaking of the brain down the spinal cord. And then they finally confirmed it again on the 19th. So she had four deaths. What stand up doctors? One eighty three. She made Geraldine Chorney had the life support machine disconnected by nine forty eight PM. One eighty four. Shemay's body was showing signs of late stage of body decomposition. How the hell was it? alive where they had to turn off a machine to kill it. Does that even make any sense? I'm not going to repeat that. If you want to hear that again, you can just put the video back a little bit and listen to that because that is just something from the Twilight Zone. There is no rhyme or reason around any of it other than it was a cover-up. There is no statute of limitation on murder. with or without a lawyer. <clears throat> 184. Shemay's body was showing signs <clears throat> <clears throat> of late stage stages of body decomp stages more than one of body decomposition where her eyes were leaking out of her eye sockets 
in addition to her tongue was also protruding profusely out of her mouth as the rest of her body was extremely bloated and she had water blisters forming on her skin. What are you doing? Stop it! You're stressing me out! No! Why are you so full of vinegar, man? It was also noted wait, extremely bloated and she had water blisters forming on her skin and in time in in terms of um, timeline for body de decomposition there are certain stages with water blisters being one of them which is pretty much in around the time for she was there for nine days so yeah, by eight, nine days, that would be extremely normal. Sierra was starting to have water blisters on her body, but not as much, and it was more just up around here. wasn't so much on their bo on her body because she was in in um you know in cold storage, right? Where Shime was in a warm hospital room. So yeah, it would it would be a given that she'd have blisters all over the place, right? But most people don't think about what happens to dead bodies. Never mind how embalming is hap you know, how, how the, the embalming process. They don't think about these things, right? They just take everything for face value. And if the doctor says, well, it's, you know, something because of whatever, you know, the body is retaining water and that's why it's doing that. And here's the medical term. They will take the medical term first before they'll take the actual symptom of what they're looking at in terms of now that's decomposition. The body's been dead for a while. You just didn't notice it. <laughs> you know how many people I bet you they do this to? Probably a lot of people. <clears throat> I'm, Shemay's not the first one. Okay. No way. Uh-uh. It's okay. Um, forming on her skin. 185. It was, I wrote this to the cops. It was also noted by Judy on previous days when going to the hospital that dark liquid was being drawn out of the tube that was inserted in Shimei's mouth. That right there is a warning sign. 186. Shimei's body displayed every sign of a body decomposing on life support. 187. They can't call it life support when the body is decomposing. But that's what they do. 187. Judy specifically requested that a autopsy be performed on Shimei to investigate as to what had happened to her in terms of any injuries caused by blunt trauma to the head, strangulation, suffocation, or any other secondary poisoning before fentanyl and cocaine were introduced into her body by some other person. 188. That's what I was asking for, right? In addition to, Judy also requested 
for the autopsy to be perform to be performed to try and determine how fentanyl and cocaine were introduced into Shimei's body and determine how fentanyl I read that into her body whether by way of ingestion by mouth injection by needle whether into a vein or into the muscle or by inhaling through the nostril or through absorption through the skin or through any other method possible right you're going to tell me there's fentanyl in your body well how did it get in there I'd like to know shouldn't shouldn't they figure out how it got in there instead of assuming that she just did it to herself so it wouldn't matter how it got in there as long as it got in there 189 nobody was allowed to have a lock we well, talked about Shimei's hair of Shimei's hair for keepsakes purposes when asked if they could because the attending nurse said that Shimei's body and including her hair was to not be moved altered or in the case of Shimei's hair cut the nurse said that the pathologist would have gotten angry if her hair had been cut if that's not ass nine I don't know what is okay one ninety page twenty three <clears throat> <clears throat> This is what I mean. They they don't they don't even act like they're fucking real professional nurses and doctors. This is something that you would see in a fucking theater with actors performing a role. It makes more sense to be watching a movie that's not real, which is actors playing a role compared to thinking that these are professional people doing a professional job. The pathologist is only going to cut my daughter's body apart, but don't cut the hair. Like, yeah, okay. What ma what difference does it matter with the hair? If the if the people in the room have a little bit of hair, in her, because she may have beautiful beautiful hair, but when they got her in that three hour period, I don't know what the hell they did with her hair. They put fucking electrodes or something in her hair because it, it, it kind of almost well. It's not quite the similar as the one with the corner at John Hart's, but there's definitely something going on a little bit with Shimei's hair. But they they made a mess out of it, like they they literally made a bloody mess out of it. And she looked, they made her look like a freaking haggy haggy girl that came off of, out of the freaking lean to or something. Serious. One ninety. The nurse did, however, provide a few strands of hair for lab testing in the event that Judy could locate a lab in British Columbia willing to do a hair follicle test for illegal or poisonous substances. <clears throat> I wasn't going to rule out anything, right? April 20th, 2016. Judy goes to Surrey Safe Injection Site. So the next day, because I'm waiting for these cops, obviously whatever happened on the 19th with that investigator didn't happen because I had this compul compulsion to go to the safe injection site to start getting some answers because I wasn't getting no freaking answers here, people. Okay, 191. Due to the overall apathy response by various government workers within the police union sector who either blamed or indirectly blamed 
Shimei herself for the injuries she sustained. Judy felt that nobody in the government sector was interested in knowing the truth and were trying to avoid the real possibility that Shimei was murdered. I gave this to the cops people. And they didn't care. Why? We don't get enough funding, Miss Chorney. There's 20 Shimei's in our stack of files here that we have to go investigate. So we really don't have time to investigate your daughter's death because by the time we go through the five cases of the 20 that we've got, we're going to have another 15 more. And the government doesn't give us enough funding to investigate all these cases. So I'm sorry. We just have to call it for what we think it is. An accident. But honestly, we think it was a suicide. Because it says here in 2013 she was depressed. I'm being asinine again. Well, not asinine. I'm being cynical. That's being cynical. Snide. I'm being snide. S Snidey. My son would call it snarkly. <laughs> One ninety three on April seventeenth. Okay, right on April seventeenth <clears throat> at the courthouse, it was pointed out that Judy, by one social worker for MCFD, who said that the police would not consider the evidence that Judy had to be viable because it had been moved by Judy. So even though I hadn't gone to the safe, safe injection site yet to get whatever I had tested, because I was waiting for the cops to come pick it up, it wouldn't have mattered if I would never have went, went to the safe injection site because I had already taken it off the bed, put it in another bag with whatever else I thought that they needed to have, right? And then put it in here and waited for the cops to show up to pick it up, but they didn't come pick it up. You see, that's the thing, right? They weren't even returning my fucking phone calls. And they weren't doing anything at the hospital. So by the 20th, after they shut off their machine, well, they didn't shut it off, people. They switched the switch and they changed the solution that was going through those tubes to change the color of her skin. That's what they did. And that will be another video another day. I don't know. If I go blind, well, maybe somebody else will do it for me. How about that? I'm just saying. Because the evidence is there for that what I just said happened. <clears throat> and they know it. So my life is in danger. But it's been kind of like that for a while now anyway. So there's no surprises there, right? <clears throat> <clears throat> I should really keep my finger where I'm at when I'm reading. Uh, 193 on April 17th at the courthouse it was noted okay so that social worker basically told me it didn't matter what I had on the 17th the cops wouldn't take it as legitimate because I had already tampered the I had already tampered the evidence by moving it. So if it ever went to court, it wouldn't be valid because there wasn't the proper uh, 
handling of it. Right? 194. Judy thought that only the safe injection site could provide concrete answers regarding the truth as to whether those items were laced with fentanyl or not. 195. Judy also asked staff at the safe injection site many questions as to how fentanyl can be administered into a person's body, what were the reaction times to those various administrations, and many other general questions that nobody else within the government sector wanted to provide answers to. 196. Neither the safe injection site personnel or the police personnel wanted to test the card and CD case which was found very far back under Shimei's bed by Paige who was looking for Shimei's phone. Both items have a slight white powder on them but Judy was told it was not enough for testing. Well, it doesn't matter because I already got little Snapchats. Not, well, I suppose they're Snapchats, but you know, those little short things that people make with their cell phones with Julian Snort and Coke, right? Because Shimei was collecting the evidence that if they ever had to go to fucking court, she had it. No, Your Honor, right here, there he is. He's snorting the Coke, can't you see? <laughs> Just say. So that was his paraphernalia. Whatever. He tried to get my daughter to do drugs with him. She probably did. Right? She wouldn't be the first young person to experiment with drugs, but it didn't it didn't give anybody the right to fucking murder her. And it sure in the hell doesn't give cops or anyone in a position of authority to try and cover up murder so they can profiteer off that murder. En masse. More than one murder. It's like an addiction with them. The more bodies, the more money they make. Or maybe they get a better credit score. Who knows? Or maybe they're just programmed to be that way. Right? In terms of those skinwalkers. April 20th of 2018, Judy goes to local Surrey RCMP detachment because the needle exchange sent me straight to the detachment. 197. Once leaving the safe injection site, Judy then went to the drop off. Judy then went to drop off Julian's flip phone, which was his drug phone that he left on top of that wall unit that he hid behind after he moved Shimei's dead body. And Markane gave it to Tisha, and when Tisha opened it, it sprung to action with everybody putting their orders in for dope. Mm-hmm. Tisha couldn't believe it how it blew up with orders for people to, you know, ordering for dope, right? I'm just saying. That was in her possession because Marcane, there you go, had found it on a dresser in the living room on April 11, 2018 the day Shimei was injured. So he stole Shimei's phone and left his drug phone behind. And he was probably looking for it when he came back and put Shimei's phone back in the bedroom the next day. And he was probably running around looking for his drug phone. But I already had it by that time. But I didn't open it, you see, because I don't know how to use a cell phone. But when Tisha flipped it open, 
and got it to turn on. Oh yeah, it's just call after call after call, wanting to buy drugs. What a sick world we live in. One ninety eight. Marcane had given Tisha the phone initially, but it fell out of her pocket. Oh yeah, I remember this when she was in her boyfriend's car and a couple of days later that is when Alex found it under his car seat Tisha confirmed where it had come from when Alex asked her about the phone the phone was then given to Judy so it, it took a couple a couple of days for it to end up into my position. But what was the chances of it falling out in Alex's car and maybe not someplace else and got forever lost? It didn't get lost if you notice that, right? It ended up in my in my hands. <laughs> One ninety nine. Judy also dropped off another person's ID. Yeah, there was somebody else's ID up right with Julian's ID some African guy right that had been found on Shimei's dresser okay maybe it wasn't with Julian because Julian's was in the closet and this other ID was on the dresser and it was some African guys because you know Julian put it there by Paige who a few days earlier was looking for Shimei's cell phone that had disappeared prior to Julian going into the basement on April 12, 2018 to retrieve the TV and PlayStation. In other words, the phone magically appeared on April 12th after it disappeared on April 11th while he left his drug phone in the living room. 200. Judy provided a statement to the police but because she had the pot and baggie tested for fentanyl at the safe injection site, that evidence was considered to be destroyed by the RCMP officer, but that social worker from MCFD had already warned me on the 17th that as soon as I moved it from its original location, that's the answer I would have gotten back from them if I would have taken it to them without me going to the safe injection site first. It wouldn't have mattered. It would have been still the same response. The flip phone was a drug phone with Julian's alias as Bobby. And that's this, the real Shimei sister the second channel that Julian's sister likes to post on YouTube is Julian's YouTube channel, which used to be called Bobby Flint. And then when Julian died, Tamika got her brother's phone, plugged into YouTube, and now she stalks me via those two channels. Plus she's got another one, there's three of them that I'm aware of, uh, uh, Brazzy Brazzy something or something else. Either or, the Real Sume Sister YouTube channel that she has up there with spamming New Nations Unity is actually Julian's YouTube channel. April 21st of 2018, April 22nd of 2018, April 23rd of 2018. Oh, I didn't, I didn't do anything there because, you know, life goes on and there's shit that I have to do so I didn't write everything down and then I probably forgot what the fuck was going on and I didn't want to put down any kind of misinformation so I just didn't write anything down okay I just wanted to get this to the cops as fast as I could but do the best I could right so 2000, uh, 202 Judy went to legal aid and made application for legal aid assistance April 24, 2018, Amari goes to the doctor and Judy does classes. Oh, yeah. 2003, Tisha took Amari to the doctor in the morning because he had a high fever. 
throughout the night and Judy wanted to make sure he was okay and didn't need an antibiotic. <coughs> 2004, doctor wrote a note for MCFD and the judge to confirm it was best for Amari to not travel with an upper respiratory infection due to a virus. As you have to remember now, they're demanding to pick him up all the time now, right? And they want me to drop him off or pick him up. They're, they want, they're, like, right? <clears throat> 205, this is on the 24th, right? 205, Tisha contacted MCFD to inform them that it was better for Amari to stay home and not be subjected to a visit and tried to email a copy of the doctor's note to confirm. 206. Judy went to the Surrey Provincial Courthouse to meet with a family justice counselor in the afternoon. Because now I'm it's like like I went through with Andre. They had me taking parenting classes and doing criminal invest you know like doing like to see if I had a criminal record, right? You know, those kind of things, right? 2007, Judy went to the parents after separation class in the evening, right? April 25th, 2018, please come to the house to have consent form signed. Remember I told you they came, I guess it was around the 25th year at this time because that's what I got listed. And they wanted me to sign something that they had post-dated because whatever happened at the hospital wasn't done correctly. But I wasn't going to argue. And we were outside. Uh, I had to check on them. So you could almost say it's a falsified file because they post-dated it. They backdated it. Because whatever was signed or not signed at the hospital should have been signed at the time that it was dated for. But I wasn't there to sign it. And then they finally brought it to me on the 25th because they were cleaning up their files. Okay? 208. Constable Schmidt came to the house when Judy was working in the yard to have Judy sign a consent form for the police to have access to Shemay's medical records. He told Judy not to date it as he would put in the date for her. Why? Why? What, what was that all about? Right? Right? Because you have to remember now, I've been fighting for days to get an investigation. So here, finally, they can get her medical files, but they're not going to put a fucking date on it as I'm signing it. Right? Because they, they put their own date on it, and of course, I was outside, so it wasn't like I could get a photocopy. I should have got a photocopy, but you know, you don't live your life on being paranoid all the time. Right? 2009. Constable Schmidt brought to Judy's attention that the consent form that we're almost done now we're on page 25 that Tisha had signed at the hospital the day Shimei was admitted was not valid because she was not considered to be the next of kin that is Tisha's, Tisha and Shimei are sisters. So how the heck could that not be valid? 
the doctor phoned me. Tisha was there when the doctor was talking to me on the phone. <laughs> okay? Like, that doesn't make any sense. But anyway, 2000 and t uh, 2010, 210. He mentioned that detectives were taking over the case. And he advised Judy that the coroner was going to call her. Two hundred and eleven. Coroner tried to call Judy on Tisha's cell phone, but her phone was one percent power, and Judy's home phone got disconnected by accident with the ringer being turned off. Oh wow, that's major information that everybody really needs to know. <laughs> April 26, 2018. 212. Constable Chan came to the house in the evening to do a follow-up on Shimei and to recap on what had happened. Judy informed her that she was writing a timeline of events and that she would forward it to her. Constable Chan confirmed that the file was being transferred to a different policing department. That's what I said. There's two different files on this. <coughs> <coughs> <clears throat> April 27, 2018. Gee, I shouldn't have checked on him. <clears throat> <clears throat> but he's got a poo, so. 2013. Coroner called on Tisha's phone <clears throat> and spoke to Judy, although the phone conversation was not a good one because the woman said that Shimei's body hadn't been autopsied. Okay, so April 27th, they cut off that machine. They, well, they, okay, so the 19th, so 19th, 27th, that's <coughs> eight days. <coughs> so at eight days so far, they haven't done anything with the body. Okay, the phone conversation was not a good one because the woman said that Shimei's body, stop it, Amari! that Shimei's body hadn't been autopsied and that there wasn't going to be an autopsy because Shimei died of fentanyl. The coroner asked Judy to make plans to have Shimei's body picked up but that there may still be a pending investigation by police. Because you know I'm fighting for an investigation here, right? But they weren't going to do an autopsy because they felt that fentanyl was the reason why she died and therefore... Right? Okay. Two hundred and fourteen. Judy got angry because she was that's right, because I was laying in the bedroom and Tisha came with the phone. I I I wasn't talking to her out here. I was laying on the bed and I was resting and Tisha came in with her cell phone and yeah. Anyway, Judy got angry because she was surprised that Shimei had not had a autopsy done on her body and that the doctor and nurses at the Surrey Memorial Hospital lied to her and her family. 
autopsy. I signed for the paper, at least at least a hospital autopsy, right? Couldn't get the forensic autopsy done by the cops, but I did sign for a hospital autopsy to which I'm looking for that piece of paper, right? Anyway, 215. For some reason, there was lack of communication to where the coroner accused. Now I've got the coroner attacking me. If it's not the nurse and the social workers and the police, now it's the coroner. As MCFD is doing what they're doing with their, well, you know, maybe she was celebrating at 8 o'clock in the morning. Did you ever stop to think about that? Yeah, okay. <coughs> <coughs> right. For some reason, there was lack of communication to where the coroner accused Judy of twisting her words and Judy got frustrated and told the coroner that she couldn't handle it. <laughs> Two thousand uh, April 28th, 2018, that's blank. April 29th, 2018, Tamika Johnson Instagram's Tisha. Okay. Tamika showed up late on the scene. I thought it was the next day. Well, she did. Actually, she showed up that day because she went to the hospital and was there with Julian and, and Tisha when when they had Shemay in the emergency room. And then she showed up again at for that 9 o'clock thing on the same day on the 11th, right? And then she was running around in the halls when nobody was supposed to be visiting Shemay with Freddie. I don't know if Freddie was in the car and no one, Tamika ran up on her own. I don't know. But I guess she didn't, you know, approach Tisha until the 29th of 2018. And it's Scotia Brazzy Baby direct message Tisha 6.40 p.m. Hey, I would like to see my nephew. And then we left it at that. And then what goes on next is the stalking that proceeded from Tamika. Okay? Tasty Bonnie, right here, right there. See, with her long ass post, right. And then it goes on. With her friend jumping on board. That was Facebook. This is Facebook. All right. Yeah. There's other things, but that's it. Considering all things said, I mean, what you supposed to write? I I think I think it shows I tried, and I think it shows how they tried to cover up murder, and they did it as a group. And under the Criminal Code of Canada, it only takes three people, just three. Or, in the case of ghouls, it only takes three individuals to form a criminal organization. Okay? Only three. 
as all those people were criminalizing me and my family and my dead daughter. We weren't the criminals, people. We were the victims. We still are the victims. So whatever you do, if you ever find yourself anywhere near a situation like this, don't be gullible.